Greetings folks, in this video we're going to take a look at equalization, or EQ for short, in our sample wrench editor. Now I have a single edit window open, maximized, so it takes up all space. Now I usually haul in a sound uh, for convenience sake using the recently used list down here, but I thought I would open up one directly, the sort of standard way. One thing I want to point out here is the preview button. So you don't have to just sort of load something blindly. I have a whole bunch of, of um, sound files in here. Every now and then you're going to see one of these things. So notice this is the same thing, but this has a .dgc. This is a little cache file that um, Wrench creates. You can delete these if you want. It's just there to sort of speed up some processing inside Wrench. No biggie. But anyway, so if you select something, you can just hit the preview button. Many busy executives ask me. Okay, right? That's what we're going to use. So here's our sound sample. I'm going to set this to effect all. And just to verify. Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Well, count on us to be there. To be there, you betcha. All right. Equalization. I'm going to find this under the functions menu. There's several different ways we can equalize. Uh, perhaps the one that everybody's familiar with is a bass and treble control. So you have both here. You just select which one you want, or both, one or both. And we have the cut boost. Unlike a regular bass and treble control, you can control the frequency, right? This is shelving EQ. So this is essentially the, the turnover frequency. Now I am going to um, make this a little bit more obvious on the frequency end, on the high end. So let's bring this maybe around three kilohertz. Um, as you saw in the other um, videos, we do have the ability to um, haul in presets, save presets, load presets. So here we are. We're, we're going to do about a 10 dB boost above 3 kilohertz and about a 10 dB boost uh, below 200 hertz, right? So these are both selected. We can just do a preview on this. Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market in the city of the future? I'll just stop that. But you can see the result of the edit itself. All right. We actually have some clipping over here. All right. You can see how this has gone full bore. Um, so that's a bit too much. We didn't really hear it here because these peaks were you know, close to clipping, but maybe not quite. Maybe here and here. Um, but that's probably a bit much. Perhaps not surprising. I'll just undo that, get back our original waveform. Filters. Right, so filters are basically used to cut, cut frequencies out. So you can, um, you know, get rid of low frequency rumble. For example, I have a preset right here, remove subsonics just using the high-pass filter, so that allows high frequencies through. It gets rid of low frequencies. Um, this is set for 20 hertz. We have three different orders that we can use. So this is essentially the steepness of the curve. First order is the most gentle curve you can get. It reduces 6 decibels per octave. Second order is twice that. Fifth order is 5 times that, or 30 dB per octave. So this is a very steep curve. And we have the same kind of thing on... Um, on the other side, right? Uh, a low pass, so that rejects high frequencies. As an example here, um, I'm going to use this thing called Telephone Eyes. We're going to get rid of lows and we're going to get rid of highs. But I'm going to make this a little bit more obvious by sort of cranking up some of these numbers, just because right now the microphone is just picking up my monitors, my monitor loudspeaker. I don't have a direct feed, um, just for convenience. So I'm going to make this a little bit more extreme. You can definitely see how it's been reduced in amplitude. Many busy executives ask me, 
What about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Well, count on us to be there. That definitely sounds more like a telephone. So there's lots of things you can do with, with that. Now the parametric, I'm going to skip over the graph for just a sec. Parametric, this is a full par parametric. You have two bands. You've got to boost cut the center frequency that it will cut or boost around and how wide a range it will affect. All right, so you can go down very tight, tenth of an octave, to rather broad, three whole octaves. We could, for example, see, I'll just use a single one over here, crank up maybe around 10 dB, come in here around maybe a kilohertz. Um, yeah, it's uh, somewhere around here. Um, this is going to make it pretty honky sounding. You've got this sort of mid-range boost. It's going to get kind of nasal. Okay, we can do a little preview on this if we want. Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market in the city of the future? All right. You want more? Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Okay. Um, you want to change frequencies? Come down here to a big cut at 100 hertz. Uh, broaden this up a little bit, maybe. Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market in the city of the future? All right, so the bottom end's completely gone there. Crank it up to the exact opposite. This might overload. Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market in the city of the future? All right. So that's what we've got going on there. And then finally, we have this graph freak. What is this thing? This is basically a five band equalizer. Cut boost 20 dB each. But unlike a normal five band graphic equalizer, you can set the center frequencies. So it's very flexible. It's kind of like a five band quasi parametric. Once again, we've got presets. You can load and save the presets. Okay. Just to show you the way I have this configured right now, the presets for all of the functions start with the extension dot DWP for a dissidence wrench preset. And then after that come a couple of letters indicating you know, which preset they're for. Now, um, so here's one EQ filter, right? If you load one that's not appropriate, then what will end up happening is you'll just get a little error message. It'll just come up and say, you know, this is not recognized or this is the wrong kind of thing. Okay, so here's a rumble filter. This is actually for the filter. Right, so you get, oh, this is not a graph freak preset file. Okay, uh, just, just to um, show you how that works. So I'm looking for an EQ uh, base trouble. Okay, so after a while, um, you know, you'll, you'll know what these are. Right, there's an EQ filter, EQ parametric, EQ base trouble. So it loads this low end only boost. So this is an eight, you know, eight decibel boost at uh, below 80 hertz. All right. So you can, like I said, save and load your own. You put them in your own presets uh, directory and you can automatically call these things up as you need them. Cool. All right. There's one more sort of EQ that we have. It's not lumped in with the regular equalization because it's time dynamic. So it really comes in more in the effects range. And that's this thing called a very time filter. So it's a filter like the other ones, right? Like the high and low pass filter. So you have a high and a low pass filter, 
but this is a swept filter. So it's really in the old synth days, what we would call a VCF, a voltage controlled filter. So in this case, what we're doing is it's going to start at 200 Hertz and then work its way up to 10 kilohertz, sort of opening that filter as it goes, All right? So it starts as a, um, a high pass filter. So it's, this is going to get rid of all the bottom end, right? starting at 200 Hertz. And then eventually it's going to open up, okay? to uh, this 10,000 frequency. So the filter sweeps across this range. All right. So let's listen to what this sounds like, because this is going to be a little weird. Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Well, count on us. All right, so you could see the way that was filtering. It started off, right, high pass, so it's filtering the base. It's getting rid of everything below 200 hertz to start with. And then as it works toward the end, it's filtering everything below 10,000 hertz. So that's why when we got out here, all you heard was this very tiny little tinny thing, because Everything below 10,000 hertz, everything below 10 kilohertz was gone, right, by the time you get over here. And you can do the opposite, right? We can do uh, sort of um, sort of closing down on the filter the, in the, sort of the other direction, okay? Many busy executives ask me, what about the job displacement market in the city of the future? Well, count on us to be there. Okay, so this, instead of getting rid of everything below 200 and then working its way up to 10 kilohertz, this thing gets rid of everything above 200 hertz and then works its way to 10 kilohertz. So the exact opposite. And you can, of course, sw swap that. You could have the high number first and the low number second. Um, you can just kind of monkey around with this and get whatever kind of effect you want. So it's kind of an interesting sort of opening, closing door kind of effect. But that's what we're looking at in terms of equalization. There is, in fact, another way of doing EQ. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but it is possible uh, through something called impulse modeling. Right here, you can actually create an impulse response for a certain kind of filter, for a special kind of filter. And if you can import the impulse response and then drive the signal through this impulse response and create a filter out of it. So that's uh, another sort of thing that you could do. That would be like a totally custom filter if you wanted to create uh, maybe a, like a comb filter or some bizarre sort of mutating filter. You can do it. It is possible to do. Well, we're going to leave it there. Have a good one.